Ladies and gentlemen, may I have your attention, please? As we prepare to start our awards, please direct your attention to this short video on the history of the Air Safety Forum. To go out and make a significant contribution in this profession, you don't have to go out and save an entire world. You just, you just have to keep one person from getting into trouble. That person, chances are, will never know that it was an ALPA air safety representative that helped influence a significant change to pilot training, or to airport standards, or to air traffic control procedures, or to the design of an aircraft cockpit, or even to the way that an airline fundamentally conducts business. When everyone gives me this award and says that this program is because of me, it isn't true. It's because of all of the many, many ALPA volunteers that have worked together and who've supported us, who came to us and told us their stories of incidents or accidents that they had that they never had talked about because they never felt safe to do it. Many of us benefit from a mentor or two along the way. In my case, it was uh, Dick Duxbury who sort of pointed me along the path, and, and it seemed that every step of the way beyond that, it was Paul McCarthy who, who guided me, encouraged me. So thanks, Paul, for your influence, uh, your guidance, and your friendship, and also the efforts that you continue to make on behalf of pilots worldwide. No one could ever have had a better mentor than I did in Captain Steve Lucky. Steve taught me everything that I know about how to be an effective security volunteer and he's truly a legend in this business. If I had a magic wand I would try to put it over every line pilot that I fly with who doesn't come to a conference or a forum like this and try to explain to him how very complex the system is. I could sit in the cockpit, pound my chest and say a lot of really strong things and great things about what I would do, what I could do. We need the people where the rubber meets the road with the good data, with the good experience, to really tell folks what we do in the cockpit. I'm proud of my alpha work, helping address flight time duty issues as it relates to fatigue, progress in ultra-long uh, flying rules, and identifying aircraft rescue, firefighting, dangerous goods, and other cargo issues. There's hundreds of all cargo flights all over the world that are flying without many of the same security measures that our passenger brethren enjoy. The biggest thing we can do is continue to press for that one level of safety and security. Let's make tonight a celebration of what we've accomplished. And not only what we've accomplished in the past, but what we can and must fulfill for the future. And I want to thank all of you, all of you, the volunteers who've done this work. This is for you.
Ladies and gentlemen, Alpha President Captain Lee Moak. All right, good evening and a special thanks to the Communications Department for that incredible production. And in fact, why don't we just start out as the Communications Department in the house tonight? Are they? All right. Since its creation in 1931, the Airline Pilots Association International has established itself as the world's largest non-governmental aviation safety organization. I've said that statement on Capitol Hill. I've said it in Europe. I've said it in Parliament. I've said that statement all over the world. And I got to tell you, when you start talking about the largest non-governmental safety organization in the world, that's impressive. And people listen to that group. But this accomplishment took many years to achieve. And it's the product of thousands of dedicated pilot representatives who have applied their extensive knowledge and experience to find efficiency, increase productivity, improve technology, all while improving safety and increasing security by reducing and eliminating risk. I say thousands of pilots because in addition to the hundreds of safety, security, and pilot assistance representatives who currently serve Alpha's Air Safety Organizations. Thousands came before them who raised the bar by their individual and collective efforts in both the United States and Canada to help make aviation the safest and most secure mode of transportation in history. We have with us again this year a number of the Alpha Air Safety Aviation Security and Pilot Assistance Award winners. These individuals set the standard of professionalism for what they have given to their fellow airmen, their industry, and their profession by the contributions that they've made. Join with me in thanking them as I ask them to stand and recognize as I call each name and the year of the award. And look, this year we're going to do it this way. I'm going to say, hold your applause until the end, and you're going to do whatever the hell you want to do. <laughs> so, so don't worry about it. So Aviation Security Award winner, 2011, Everett Reese. Two thousand twelve, Wolfgang Koch. <laughs> Pilot Assistance Award, two thousand eleven, Tom O'Toole. <laughs> Safety Award winners, nineteen eighty three, Jack Howell. Nineteen eighty eight, David Haas. Nineteen eighty nine, Dick Russell. Nineteen ninety five, Dick Duxbury. Nineteen three, Mitch Serber. 2006, Bob Perkins. 2007, Terry McVanus. 2008, David Wells. 2009, Ray Jelena. 2011, Bill DeGro. 2012, Mark Rogers. And so now I want to thank you for holding your applause the entire time. 
And if you would join me in applause for all of the people that deserve those awards. The tremendous achievements of these many pilots serve to remind us that we have a challenge to fulfill and with it a reputation to uphold. Winston Churchill once said, the price of greatness is responsibility. Tonight we pay tribute to Alpha pilots who have accepted that responsibility and demonstrated that greatness. We'll also recognize three fellow pilots for their quick thinking, their professionalism, and their skill. Attributes that allowed them to exercise feats of superior airmanship to avert potential disaster. These heroes and the energy and the commitment that they have demonstrated to realize their accomplishments are a testament to ALPA's legacy as safety, security, and pilot assistance advocates. ALPA's more than 51,000 members are the cornerstone of not only North America's air transportation system, but that of the world's. And tonight we acknowledge the admirable efforts of these men and women in a celebration of pilots helping get the job done safely and securely. The pilots selected for the awards presented this evening, as well as those whom we've honored throughout the week, continue ALPA's proud tradition of leadership, volunteerism, and service to others. We applaud them for their decisions and actions which have served the greater aviation community. Thank you for joining us this evening as we salute them. Additionally, this evening we have many honored guests with us tonight. And time will not permit me to introduce all of them, but I'd like to identify a few of them who are seated here at the head table. We have Captain Craig Hoskins, Vice President of Safety and Technical Affairs at Airbus. We have Captain Terry McVinnis over here, Terry, Director of System Safety and Regulatory Affairs at Boeing. And we have Captain Don Wyckoff, President of the International Federation of Airline Pilots Associations. Don. We have Captain Hiroake Tateno, President of the Airline Pilots Association of Japan. And our uh, honored guest, he will be back up here in a minute. We have Mr. Rob O'Neill. We have Mr. Mike Peroni, the President of the Professional Aviation Safety Specialist Union. Mike, where are you at, sir? You go. We have Mr. John David, Vice President of Safety and Quality at NAV Canada, and I've enjoyed talking with John this week. He has a lot of personality. John? <laughs> Lucky to have you down here again. So thank all of you. Actually, one more. We have the President of Griffin Technologies, Pam Braden, also the founder of Your Grateful Nation, which is a nonprofit to help special operations uh, individuals as they transition out of the service back to civilian life. Thanks, Pam, for joining us. We look forward to the continued partnerships and collaboration with each of you and your organizations. ALPA and the Air Safety Organization would not have us Establish the tremendous reputations they have without the work of the association's professional staff. Every day, these individuals apply their extensive knowledge and experience to advance our safety, security, and pilot assistance mission. They work closely with our pilot representatives in 
our many industry and government partners. And again, it, this always scares the staff. I'm going to deviate from the script. I, I want to tell you something. <laughs> this is truly what sets us apart. We have great pilots. We have a member-run, staff-supported union. The pilots do incredible work. The volunteers do incredible work while continuing to fly passengers day in and day out safely and making that look easy. And the staff provides the intense continuity required to get things done in this city, to get things done in Ottawa. Without the staff, we'd be just another one of these other groups. So please join me tonight in thanking the ALPA staff for their impressive work. And I, and I guess while I'm on a roll, <clears throat> I'd like to also recognize all the spouses, significant others, and other family members whose support enables ALPA pilot representatives to continue their important work on our behalf. You're all vital members of the ALPA team, and we appreciate you sharing this special celebration with us. And I'm going to tell you when your significant other is flying a full line, volunteering to do safety, security, pilot assistance work, and trying to convince you to do that on the few days that he has off, but you, you stand there and support him. You really, really are truly special. And um, I'd also like to, you know, recognize my wife Kay, who many of you have never met. <laughs> Who, who I have here too. And finally, let us acknowledge those who have paved the way for our progress but are no longer with us. Please join with me in a moment of silence for all the pioneering pilots and all our fellow ALPA members who have flown west as we remember these giants of aviation safety and security. And additionally, let us remember the passengers and our colleagues, the crew of Malaysian Airlines Flight 17 and other recent tragedies that have affected our industry. Thank you. Now, I would like to continue with the awards. So would Delta MEC Chairman Captain Mike Donatelli please join me on the stage to assist in tonight's Superior Airmanship Award presentation. So what I'm going to ask you to do, and it's not hard to do, I can tell you right now, please give your undivided attention to Captain Donatelli as he describes the heroic actions of the crew of Delta Flight 415. Mike. Thanks, Lee. Thank you. Uh, I'm truly honored to represent the over 12,000 Delta pilots. Uh, as a sidebar comment, it's not every, every day or every year that a Delta crew achieves this type of award. So let me continue on with the, uh, the ceremony and the acclamation here. The superior, superior airmanship. On December 5th, 2013, Captain Edward Byrd was the pilot in command of Delta Airlines Flight 415, a Boeing 767 service from Madrid, Spain to New York's John F. Kennedy International Airport. First Officer Kenneth Wesson was the pilot flying, and First Officer Daniel Wright in the jump seat was the International Relief First Officer. Final numbers for the flight included 200 passengers and eight flight attendants. The purser was Ken Wasson's wife. The airplane weighed 376,000 pounds for takeoff, 
with First Officer Wesson flying, and just after rotation at 161 knots, the pilot heard a loud bang from the right side of the airplane, accompanied by a heavy vib vib vibration and con continued noise. The vibration was sufficiently heavy to cause deployment of some of the passengers' emergency oxygen masks and some cabin ceiling panels to open. The pilots tried to raise the landing gear, but the, la the, the gear would not retract. After climbing through 1,000 feet above the airport, the pilots checked the engine indicating caution and alerting system or ICAS for information. Multiple caution lights, and I mean multiple caution lights were illuminated, showing problems with the center primary hydraulic system pressure and the right hydraulic system pressure and indicating the landing gear doors were not closed. The ICAS also, also showed that the quantity of the hydraulic fluid in the center hydraulic system was zero. In the right hydraulic system, the, the quantity was less than a gallon. Captain Byrd declared an emergency to the Spanish air traffic controller. Then he and First Officer Wright ran the checklist for the hydraulic system pressure failure per, per the quick reference handbook, or QRH. Captain Byrd directed First Officer Wright to communicate with the flight attendants, Delta's Madrid station operations, and the passengers. Concurrently, Captain Byrd informed Delta dispatch of the emergency and began to help First Officer Wesson prepare for an overweight landing. Captain Byrd conducted a thorough briefing, which included the fact that the wheel brake system would have a brake accumulator pressure only, and that the right thrust reverser and the nose wheel steering would not be available. Air traffic control vectored the stricken airplane to runway 13 left for an instrument landing system approach. The pilots extended the flaps to 20 degrees via the alternate flap extension procedure in the, in the QRH, the quick reference handbook. The approach speed per the quick reference handbook was 182 knots or 210 miles per hour. First Officer Wesson made a normal landing in the touchdown zone on speed. His wife was happy. <laughs> he manually extended the speed brakes, which reduced wing lift and increased wheel braking effectiveness. Only the left engine thrust re reverser was available, and only brake accumulator pressure was available. With the pilots using full manual braking and left, left thrust reverse, the overweight 767ER decelerated on the runway until reaching the last taxiway. It's always the last taxiway. <laughs> Where the pilots discovered the brake accumulator pressure had been, had been depleted to the point that there were no more brakes available. With no brakes, no steering, and left thrust, thrust applied, the airplane moved to the left into the LA high-speed taxiway, then onto J3 taxiway, and departed the pavement onto a dry, hard ground with main gears approximately 20 feet from the pavement. The pilots shut down the engines and told the passengers to stay seated. They started the auxiliary power unit, or APU, for onboard electric power generation and air conditioning. The Madrid Airport Fire Department examined the outside of the airplane and sprayed the hot, smoking brakes. The pilots called for air stairs and buses to deplane the passengers and the crew. The purser was right there. <laughs> None of the passengers or crew members were injured. The pilots conducted all post-incident procedures in accordance with the Delta Flight Operating Manual, and afterwards, the pilots exited the airplane. They found that the number eight tire, the right rear tire, had exploded and blown a large, ragged hole in both the bottom and the top surfaces of the wing above the tire. For their superior handling of all aspects of this harrowing emergency situation, I am proud to invite Captain Byrd, First Officer Wesson, and First Officer Wright to the stage for the presentation of the ALPA Superior Airmanship Award.
this and then I'll hand it out. All right. All right, the citation reads as follows. For your professionalism and skillful action on December 5th, 2013, on Delta Airlines Flight 415, during takeoff from Madrid, Spain, a tire explosion extensively damaged your 767, despite a large hole in the wing, no nose were steering, the brakes failing, and only one operational thrust reverser, you were able to safely return and land with no injuries. Your demonstrated airmanship in this event exemplifies the best of our profession. I'm honored to present Captain Edward Byrd, First Officer Kenneth Wasson, and First Officer Daniel Wright with Alpha Superior Airmanship Award. Congratulations. I would just like to thank a few people if I, if I could. Podium's yours. I'm not one to stand in front of a crowd and make a speech, so this won't be one. But I would like to thank a few people uh, who did a lot to help us that day and for many months afterwards. Thank you. Uh, from Delta Safety Department, I want to recognize, and I think he's here, Bill Klein, who spent many phone calls with me asking questions and giving me reassurance. Uh, Jason Ragonia, I know you're here because I saw you. Thank you for all you did that day in Spain to help us get out of the country without any problems and, and, try, <laughs> <laughs> and to try to calm our nerves down a little bit. Um, and I want to recognize the chief pilot in New York, Rich Terry, who is here for his support also, especially in the months af after the incident happened. Uh, ALPA safety people, I want to recognize Dick Holloway for his support, uh, Dan Collier and Scott Hammond. And I, I particularly want to uh, acknowledge <clears throat> my flight crew, uh, Beth Watson, would you please stand up so everybody knows who you are? <laughs> <laughs> Beth was the purser that day and kept her crew and the whole back of the airplane under control. And nobody, none of the passengers panicked or everybody was calm. Everybody got off the airplane walking and that's a tribute to Beth and her crew. And I just want to name the crew in case they haven't been recognized. Lee Moon, Meredith Eves, who by the way, helped the situation halfway on downwind in the middle of the checklist Meredith came up to the cockpit with a picture of the hole in the top of the wing. I had been thinking about dumping fuel at the time when she came up, and I, I dismissed the idea after that. Um, but that, that did change the outcome of the event in a positive way, and I want to thank her for that. Uh, the other crew members were Ann Holman, Angela Winningham, Oscar Jose Friere, Anna Seralta, and Patrick Schaus. Thank you all, and thank you for your level-headed professionalism. Just 30 seconds here, if that. I'd like to thank Beth, my wife, for always being by my side. Chad, my son, for always having my back. And my dad, who's recently passed, for getting me here. Thank you. Since they both spoke. So much, <laughs> so much for getting through my career anonymously. Um, <laughs> I echo, I echo Captain Bird's remarks. Uh, I, I think there's a lot of people we have to thank that work so hard behind the scenes, um, and most importantly, our family for who we, we come to work every day. Uh, my wife Beth is here with me, and my daughters Megan and Marianne. Uh, I thank both of them as well. Thank you.
Now I want to honor a ALPA member who through various leadership roles with the association and aviation industry groups has helped accomplish what others have been trying to do for more than 60 years, establishing new pilot flight duty and rest rules that improve the safety of air travel worldwide. That's right, Captain Don Wyckoff, I'm talking about you. Don's work has led to the FAA implementing FAR 117 on January 4th of this year, a day many in this room thought would never come. As co-chair of the FAA Flight and Duty Time Limitations and Rest Requirements Aviation Rulemaking Committee, or ARC, he developed a model path to writing a new science-based set of flight duty and rest regulations. Keep in mind, prior to this arc, the old rules were written before the jet age even started. Now for the first time in the United States, these rules address a pilot's circadian rhythm, duty limits, and onboard rest facilities. They provide education for pilots to address fatigue mitigation and a clear path to implementing fatigue risk management systems. They also set a standard for other aviation regulators to emulate worldwide. ALPA intends to share these best practices with the global aviation community, including our Canadian members. We will also not rest until these rules apply to all commercial airline pilots, including those who fly cargo. Now, getting these new rules wasn't enough for Captain Wyckoff, though. He, his dedication continues. He's answering our pilots' operational questions about how to apply the new rules flying the line every day. He's working with the FAA to address issues and now hosting a workshop in September on this very subject. Captain Wyckoff, would you please join me on the stage? So I'm going to read the plaque. You know, I still need some uh, rest rules up here in this job. I just we'll get you a break uh, here shortly. All right. <laughs> Presidential recognition award to Captain Don Wyckoff, Chairman Alpa Flight Time Duty Time Committee, and Co-Chairman of the committee that modernized the FAA flight and duty time regulations. With grateful appreciation for your dedication, innovation, perseverance, and leadership in successfully accomplishing what others had been unable to do for 60 years, new flight crew rest and duty regulations that will improve the safety of air travel worldwide. Don, it gives me Great pleasure to present you with the ALPA Presidential Recognition Award. if I can break it if I leave it there. Um, Lee, thanks a lot, and, and thanks to everybody here. You know, um, when I look at this, uh, first of all, I have to admit, you know, on this evening when I see the scroll of names of uh, the giants of aviation safety, security, and pilot assistance, that's, we got a chance to look at the video and read the names. I'm, I'm humbled uh, to just share the evening with you, so I thank you very much. Um, Ed, Ked, and Dan, unbelievable job. I know as our central Scott Hammond likes to say about what we do, you know, having fun and saving lives, and, and you guys did, got the job done, so uh, congratulations. It's, uh, it's an honor to share the evening with you, and uh, particularly Ed being a fellow Cincinnati and a Bearcat grad. Congratulations, <laughs> nicely done. Every now and again, a couple of us do okay, I guess. Um, you know, I look at this, and I, there's a name on there, um, and the problem is, is 
particularly on something that takes this amount of time to do. This isn't me, this is a team that does this, and it's a, it's a large team, and it starts off with um, the, the support and um, just the confidence that really more than one ALPA president, more than Lee's had in me and the team. Uh, also, uh, John Prater, Dwayne Worth, who uh, asked me to chair the committee. I uh, find it hard to believe when Susan asked me earlier, 12 years ago. Um, so we've been at it a little while. And then a fourth also, which was very important, was Randy Babbitt, who asked ALPA to co-chair this. And uh, that was an important step in this to get this regulation. It was also important to have the team to go in not only with the Flight and Duty Time Committee, of, of which many folks have been on through the time. I'm glad to see Dave Wells here again. A member had a chance to work with him as well. And then uh, the whole team that was on the rulemaking committee. So it, it's not one person. It's not just a group of pilots. It's also a staff, Jay Wells. And then I can't stand here and uh, take any credit without mentioning someone who I've had the chance to work this project with, uh, Jim Johnson. Um, yeah, absolutely. Jim's got a little experience working the issue since I think he uh, he he took you know took a look at it right after Wilbur and Orville started working the issue. But, um, so he's got a little experience, as I like to think, along those lines. Um, it, it is a, it truly is an honor, and also um, uh, very humbled with uh, Ken, Robert, and Isabel with your awards upcoming here and joining this list of folks. So I really appreciate the opportunity. Um, it's been an interesting couple weeks for everybody that's in, been in aviation safety, so as, we've, as I finish up here, I, I ask you just to do one thing, and in the business that you all are in, and I am honored to join you in, keep in mind that a lot of times we, people kind of take for granted what you do every day. And the last couple, three weeks really reminds us that our work was never done. Uh, on the safety and security and pilot assistance front, just with what particularly what we've seen with the Malaysian incident. And our work is not just in the, the borders of the United States, it's global. And the world looks to us as leaders. And I know that they've got a great leadership when I look out in this audience. And uh, in closing, I'm humbled to be on your team, and I appreciate all the great work you do. Thank you. Hey, Don, Don, Don. So as Don's exiting, congratulations again on a very well-deserved award, and thank you again for your leadership in developing and implementing these rules that we've been waiting for for 60 years. Thank you, Don. Now I'd like to ask our pilot assistance chair, Captain Jerry McDermott, to please join me on the stage to assist in tonight's pilot assistance award presentation. Jerry? Oh, here he comes. As you know, in addition to aviation safety and security, pilot assistance is a major component of ALPA's air safety organization. Pilot assistance encompasses ALPA's aeromedical, the critical incident response program, HIMSS, professional standards, and Canadian pilot assistance efforts. In April, ALPA held a one-day seminar on pilot health and medical certification, highlighting the fact that aviation safety begins with a healthy pilot, an event that was an incredible success. Now it's my privilege to present the ALPA Pilot Assistance Award for 2013. And tonight I'm honored 
to give this prestigious award to Jazz, Jazz Air First Officer Isabel Caron. First Officer Caron is being recognized for providing outstanding support to her fellow, fellow Canadian pilots and the many demands that come with being a member of the Canadian Pilot Assistance Group. With leadership, with support, and with compassion, First Officer Caron has provided guidance to help pilots facing challenges in the various aspects of their professional and personal lives that may affect their work. She was instrumental in supporting the First Air pilots and employees following the 2011 First Air Flight 6560 accident at Resolute Bay in Nunavut, Canada. Through her tireless dedication to training and volunteerism, First Officer Caron continues to contribute to the health and the well-being of her fellow ALPA members, working behind the scenes in confidentiality to help those in need. She is truly an ALPA asset. First Officer Caron, would you please join me on the stage? So the plaque reads, 2013 Pilot Assistance Award to Captain Isabel Caron, Jazz Aviation, in recognition, recognition of compassionate crisis intervention, intervention support to members of the Airline Pilots Association International as a critical incident response volunteer. It gives me great pleasure to present you with the ALPA Pilot Assistance Award. Bonsoir, tout le monde. Ça va bien? Can I do this in French? <laughs> oh, oui. Uh, before I get started, uh, it's going to be very short, but we're having a very nice dinner tonight. I would like to thank once again everybody that was uh, involved in this uh, wonderful evening. Thank you. Um, I am. I would like to thank Alpa for this award. I am very, very proud to be one of the uh, Alpa, part of the Alpa family. I would like also to thank my company, Air Canada Jazz. It, it has been more than 11 years now that I joined Pilot Assistance. I learned a lot, and during this period, I could always count on two very important persons to me: uh, Murray Monroe and Tom O'Toole. They're always there for me, and I want to thank you very much once again. Also, I'd like to give a big thank to Jerry McDermott for your leadership and your support. Thank you. And Louise, I admire a lot your work. You're very passionate. Thank you for the great work you do also. There's two gentlemen tonight who are not here. They're from Toronto, they're Canadian, Brian Murray and David Noble. Uh, thank, I'd like to thank them also. Uh, this morning I woke up and I had this uh, reflection. And I think right now we're super advanced with technology, computers, state-of-the-art airplanes and everything. But um, some people even say that uh, someday uh, pilots airplanes will fly without pilots but uh, I hope this never happens. Right now, there's still human beings flying those airplanes, and we have to take care of those uh, human beings if we want a safe sky. That is where pilot assistance become very important. Every one of us go through some difficulties during our life. Some of us will go through divorce, loss of a child, uh, chemical dependency, or even uh, fail at the simulator. So that's where I think I'm gonna ask you something. Next time you see a coworker who's not feeling well or he's having some trouble or issue, please think some time and go and talk to them. I think there's a little bit of a pilot assistant in every one of us. 
And before I finish, we've said it a lot, that family is very, very important. I have a very supportive family, a wonderful son, David, and a wonderful husband to Patrick. And I would like to thank you once again. So enjoy your night, everybody, and thank you. And again, congratulations to Isabel on this very well-deserved award, and thank you for everything you do to support our members every day. Now, would ALPA's Aviation Security Chair, Captain Fred Eisler, please join me on a stage to insist me in tonight's presentation of the Aviation Security Award. It's my privilege to present the ALPA Aviation Security Award for 2013. And tonight, I am honored to give this prestigious award to PSA Captain Robert Hamilton. Captain Hamilton serves his fellow pilots in a variety of capacities, including chairman of both the ALPA Security Council and the PSA ALPA Master Executive Council's Security Committee. This year, Captain Hamilton made important contributions to the Laser Threat Awareness Initiative. This nationwide campaign, which is led by the Federal Bureau of Investigation and supported by ALPA, continues to raise awareness about the serious dangers posed by illegal laser illumination of aircraft cockpits. Captain Hamilton was instrumental in the planning and production of a laser threat awareness video which has been broadcast by multiple media outlets across the United States. He also participated in numerous interviews to address this threat. A consummate professional, Captain Hamilton has provided outstanding leadership to his fellow pilots in a variety of capacities, including his service to the PSA pilots as a member of their system board of adjustment. He's an active participant in ALPA's grassroots legislative program and can regularly be seen walking the halls of Congress to advocate for ALPA priorities. But I particularly want to thank him for his work as chairman of the ALPA Security Council and all that he and the group has accomplished to increase the safety and security of air transportation. Captain Hamilton, would you please join me on the stage? And the award reads, 2013 Aviation Security Award to Captain Robert Hamilton, PSA Airlines, for your significant contributions to aviation security while representing the interests of airline pilots worldwide with special recognition of your devotion and hard work to mitigate the threat of laser strikes. It gives me great pleasure, pleasure to present the aviation, ALPA Aviation Security Award. Well, um, first I have to say, Isabella, thanks a lot for giving me such a tough act to follow. <laughs> also, thank you, Captain Moak. I am so honored to receive this award, yet I do have to admit I accept it with some trepidation because it is this organization that has inspired me every day. It is your professionalism of our pilots, the dedication, their hard work, expertise, that each of you give freely of your own time that makes this profession great and imparts to me, that imputes to me a level of respect that I don't personally deserve. If you will allow me to use a biblical analogy, and please, I, I don't mean this as a theological lesson, however, I do believe that it illustrates my point. In Judges chapter 10, it's one of the most terrifying passages in all of Old Testament literature. It tells the story about how their children did not remember the Lord. The children that grew up with their parents talking about how God had parted the Red Seas, 
had fed them with food from heaven and had caused the walls of Jericho to fall down, yet they did not remember their God. Today we are in a very similar situation. New pilots, they've heard the stories of the evils of Nazi Germany, the hijackings of the 1970s, and the terrorist attacks of 9-11, and most recently now the shooting down of a civilian aircraft over threatened airspace in a war-torn country. In the past, we have been blessed with many pilots who came from a military background. They were taught a security mindset, and they lived it. Today, our new pilots are primarily coming from a civilian background, and God forbid that it be said of us that we failed to teach our young. I know that this education is possible because I am a product of that. I came from a civilian background, yet it is from you and your efforts that I was educated and nurtured. And I will never forget the patience of ALPA staff, whether it be Jerry Bridger or Linda, assisting me or Tina, Dan, and Petra who have kept me on task and on schedule. I remember when I was building my first relationship with the FBI, I was approached with a question and I was able to reach out to Bill DeGroe and Pedro Rivas, whose expertise allowed me to be an asset. And as I think back, I can't help but thank Fred Eisler, who has supported me and spent countless hours sharing wisdom and insight. Jesse Cooling, my MEC chairman, for his support. Wolfgang Koch for his friendship. Darren Dorn, his words of encouragement. Eric Herman and his support and assistance as my vice chairman. And the kind words of Preston Green or Sean Cassidy, who has always worked with me to get to yes, and some of the out-of-the-box out of ideas that I've come up with, that is truly a testament to, uh, to Sean. Thank you. I would also like to thank George Johnson, who's in the audience today. George, if you would stand up for just a moment. George has been the energizer bunny on this issue. He has briefed everyone from the director of the FBI on down when people were saying that, ah, this is just an issue that it just affects pilots, no one really cares about them. He was able to make them understand the seriousness of this crime. Thank you, George. I also want to thank my parents who are here with me tonight. My mother, who was, when I was struggling in school, said in her great Midwestern way, I'm not going to raise an idiot. <laughs> and proceeded to spend the next six years of her life ensuring that I was educated. <laughs> My father, who lived before me with honor and integrity, and I hope that I become half the man that he is. I would also be remiss if I didn't thank my children, Rebecca and RJ, who have been so understanding with a father who is always working, all the while while trying to figure it out what it is exactly that I do. So I developed this, this I don't know for lack of a better word, I just told them that, shh, you can't tell anybody, daddy's a secret police. So it was just this concept that even their young minds could understand what daddy does and don't talk about it. Well, one day my daughter was at her skating lesson when her coach said, what does your daddy do? And she goes, oh, he's a pilot. To which she responded, oh, that's so neat. He flies airplanes. Later on in the car, she, she responded, silly Coach Tappy, doesn't she know? She thinks pilots fly airplanes. Doesn't she know they're secret police? <laughs> <laughs> so in closing, let me just close this way. I am so honored to receive this award, yet it is you who have enabled my accomplishments. So to you and to him who gives life, health, and all success, I thank you. And congratulations, Robert, on this well-deserved honor, and thank you for everything you do to secure our airports, our skies, and our cockpits. Now I'm honored to present the ALPA Air Safety Award this evening, and I have the privilege of recognizing FedEx Express Captain Mike Bender for his extraordinary contributions to the safety of air transportation through his dedicated accident investigation and prevention work. 
Captain Bender's personal circumstances, which many of you know, do not allow him to join us tonight. But we didn't want this night to go without a well-deserved special presentation. Captain Sean Cassidy recently traveled to Seattle with the award, so please turn your attention to the screens for a special video. Well, good evening, everybody, and greetings from Seattle. It gives me great pleasure on behalf of our Captain, uh, President Lee Moak, to have the distinct honor and privilege of presenting the 2013 ALPA Annual Air Safety Award to a very, very deserving recipient, Captain Mike Bender here from FedEx Express. Also joining me to help with the presentation is his NBC Chairman, Captain Scott Stratton from FedEx Express. So a little bit about Mike. One of the things that distinguishes ALPA is that we have a tremendously talented cadre of safety volunteers, and Mike is certainly emblematic of, of that group of individuals. Mike's commitment to safety goes much further back than ALPA, though, because I actually had the privilege of meeting him back in the Navy when we were both uh, EA-6 Prowler pilots uh, based up at Whidbey Island. Before that, Mike had gone to school at Emory-Riddle and also University of Missouri, where he had a focus on safety, which took him all the way through the military and through the Naval Aviation Safety School and then on to various uh, volunteer positions with ALPA. Most notably, Mike was involved in the Accident Investigation Board, and he eventually took over the board, uh, running it in 2008 until uh, fairly recently. Some notable things that Mike has done uh, in the way of accident investigation, especially under Accident Analysis and Prevention Group, was back in 1999, he was called to observe a brake teardown in Toulouse after a FedEx flight had uh, departed the runway Manila in the Philippines. About a decade later, he actually led the ALPA accident investigation team looking into the fatality accident involving FedEx 80 in Narita, Japan. And most recently, I had the privilege of really seeing Mike's uh, incredible experience and expertise as he guided a very, very traumatized group of Asiana pilots through the aftermath of the Asiana 214 accident as a consultant on behalf of AFALPA and also ALPA. Mike's accomplishments speak for themselves. His commitment to his fellow pilots is peerless. And I think that, again, uh, I cannot think of a more worthy recipient for the 2013 award. Here to say a couple words about Mike also is Scott Stratton, so I'm going to turn it over to you, Scott. Thanks, Sean, and good evening. I think in addition to the excellence that Sean highlighted about Mike, is at FedEx, he was also one of the architects of our safety programs, including LOSA, ASAP, FOQA. The reason was simple. We're new to ALPA, and we were new to some of these programs, so we didn't have that integrated cooperative programs that many took for granted, and Mike was there to help throughout this process. I think it's fair to say that I speak for all FedEx pilots when I say that I'm in awe of the commitment Mike has shown to safety, to the commitment Mike has shown to the FedEx pilots and to all ALPA pilots. And I'm honored to be here today to represent FedEx ALPA in this very deserved and important award. Well, now comes the really fun part. And in order to help us with the honors, I'd like to invite Mike's wife, Susie, to come up and uh, actually bring the award with us so we can present it to Mike. So, on behalf of the Airline Pilots Association International, it's my pleasure to present the 2013 Air Safety Award to Captain Michael Bender, FedEx Express, for your significant contributions to flight safety while representing the interest of airline pilots worldwide, with special recognition of your diligence and hard work in the area of accident investigation and prevention. Presented this evening, August 7th, 2014, on behalf of Captain Lee Moak. Congratulations. Well done. Thanks, Sean. Okay. Now, Mike would like to have uh, the opportunity to, to uh, say a couple words, so we're going to have our seats, and the uh, floor is yours, Mike. Thank you. Good evening, everybody. First of all, I'd really like to be there with you instead of here on video. Uh, I really miss the group gathering. It's always fun to see a bunch of professionals and hang out and just occasionally have a cold beer with them. Uh, not that I drink. 
except when I'm a loner with people. But the, uh, this award is certainly not something I expected. It's a humbler, uh, and it's obviously quite an honor. And uh, you know, no one goes into this business uh, to, to get an honor. They do it because they have dedication, want to help, do something for everybody else. Uh, in this case, uh, for me, it's, it's truly, uh, for the people who know me, this, they'll know this isn't very often the case. I, I was almost speechless. I had to work really hard to find something that, that I could say that, that would even come close to, to how I felt about it. Uh, thanks to everybody. Uh, and of course, this, an award like this is never for just one person. It's, it's, it, you can recognize one person, but there's always plenty of people behind the scenes that have been absolutely integral to any kind of a recognition that comes to any one individual. Uh, there's a lot of shoulders that have provided me some support, or a lot of support throughout these many years of working with both the MEC and at National. And, uh, and I got to mention at least just a few of them interspersed with some remarks about how they've done stuff for me or with me. Uh, first and foremost, you saw my lovely bride of 33 plus years now. Susie, you've been my rock. She's the self-appointed keeper of my things. And with that in mind, I've been able to go run off and do this ALPA work uh, without worrying about the, the, the situations at home because I know they're in good hands. For our uh, many years in the Navy together and now my time as an airline pilot, uh, it's, I've never had to worry about what was going on at home. Susie's always been there to take care of it. Thanks, my love. Uh, and my fellow safety volunteers for a, for a large part of this group out in front of us, it's been incredible working with you all. The, uh, each and every one of you uh, has, has shared knowledge and experience. And, and for those who haven't done uh, this kind of work before, if you can't learn something from this group, from these, this group of individuals, you got to be thick as a stone. Uh, there's so much to learn from so many people out there that uh, it, it, it's incredible. Uh, Captain Moak, if I can be so bold looking into the camera and unfortunately not at you, sir, uh, never forget, or please uh, don't take this as a command, uh, this group is an incredibly dedicated group. They're used to living with frustration. Safety is nothing but frustration. A lot of the time we're doing work, whether you're working with DGs, IFALPA, uh, any of the safety efforts you're trying to deal with, just dealing with your own, home, your, your own uh, parent company is nothing but frustration because you're going to have to try and prove to them that if they spend a dollar on safety, it's going to be worth more than a dollar to them on the bottom line. That's a tough job for anybody to deal with on a day-to-day -day basis. And these guys just keep coming back for more all the time. So Captain Moak, please take their inputs. Uh, they're going to be some of your best assets day-to-day uh, -day and, uh, and use them as that. I know you already know that, but I had to say it. Uh, for our professional staff, uh, the ENAS, th for those of you who haven't worked closely with the ENAS staff here in D.C., you have a special treat in, in store for you. They're an incredible group of people that have an in-depth knowledge. They're, they're our collective uh, brain uh, in, in long term, short term. They know the people, they know the assets, they know the game. They're involved in big stuff as, as of course, accident investigations near and dear to my heart, uh, all the way down to some obscure working groups on uh, in the U.S. and Canada and, and even at the IKO and, and uh, IFALPA level. And uh, if you need to know something, there's somebody on in the ENAS staff, the professional staff, that can get you an answer and usually without a lot of time and effort and research because they know the stuff. Uh, and while I'm talking about the staff, I have to mention the admin staff. Uh, a perfect example of the day-to-day -day effort that behind the scenes folks do is, uh, is this, this conference that we're wrapping up right now and that we've done many, many years for, for ALPA to get all of us together. Uh, it's evolved over the times I've been coming. Uh, we've changed the safety structure a bit, so on and off. Uh, but the staff continues to produce, the admin staff continues to produce an incredible product behind the scenes and you won't, until you get to know some of those folks, uh, you won't appreciate how much work goes into something like this. And they do it on a day-to-day -day basis for everything we do. Uh, if, you can, if you get a chance, and, and Sean, if you get a chance later, or if you haven't already done it, uh, a round of applause, I think, if you could lead a round of applause for the admin staff, that would be a wonderful thing to do. Uh, 
about right now. It sounds good to me. Uh, and Scott, can't forget the local, uh, the MEC, and that's for you, your predecessors, and our support staff at FedEx. Uh, it, it's just an incredible group. Uh, you've allowed, you've supported me, you guys, uh, the executive officers, both past and present, have been incredibly supportive of everything I've, I've tried to do over these years. We haven't always agreed, of course, and that's normal, but uh, it's been, uh, incredibly gratifying. The MEC has stepped in sometimes when, uh, when uh, National wasn't able to for one reason or another, uh, provided support both financial and uh, moral, and it's, it's just, uh, it's been incredible to be part of the FedEx uh, uh, ALPA MEC structure as one of the committee chairs. Uh, and one last acknowledgement to the international leadership. Thanks a lot for bringing this possibly, uh, possibility of me to address the group uh, uh, of course, you know, you've got to realize that the people out there in the audience that, that I'm visualizing and, and missing uh, probably would just as soon not watch some doofus on a video uh, giving us a, a little speech. But uh, because at the end of this, uh, there is the bar to open to, to close out the, uh, the whole event. And believe me, I'd rather be there than watching me anyway, uh, so I can imagine. But here we are. Uh, to my fellow awardees, congratulations on, uh, on your selection. It's incredible, uh, incredible to be lumped in with, with such uh, quality uh, volunteers. And uh, uh, working for our fellow pilots, is, is it's, it offers an incredible bond. And, uh, and looking at the efforts from the, the other various groups uh, that are being represented up here tonight, uh, it, it makes me very, very proud to be a small part of the uh, the effort we're putting in for our professional, uh, our professional aviators makes them, our lives better all the way around. Uh, okay, everyone, uh, as I mentioned, watching a video of some doofus on a stage is probably not <laughs> the best way to spend your evening, so I'll wrap this up. Uh, I, I really did want to be there with you, but uh, the situation didn't work out. I uh, brought home one of my, my now favorite phrases, if you want to make God laugh, tell him your plans. Uh, I'm proud to have been a part of, the, of this ALPA effort for these last 15, 17 years or so. Uh, it, it's been, uh, being an ALPA safety volunteer is, has been fun, it's been rewarding, it's been frustrating, but it's been completely, absolutely, positively worth doing. Good night. Well, Mike, they're not looking at a doofus, they're looking <laughs> at a leader. So, oh, thank and you. on behalf of uh, the folks here in Seattle, uh, again, congratulations to a very deserving recipient and enjoy the rest of the evening. Thanks. So I had a couple other things I was gonna say uh, about Mike, but I'm just gonna go, we'll comply. <laughs> we'll comply, everything. I'd also like to extend a special thanks to two former Air Safety Award winners, Paul McCarthy and Mark Rogers for traveling to, to Seattle to participate in carrying on the ritual amongst award winners of handing off that um, putrid tie to Mike. <laughs> no offense. As, and since he's not here, none taken, right? As this year's winner. I'd also like to thank Alaska Airlines for their help in facilitating the travel so that this award presentation could be made. 